Hey, I'm Jake. And for this video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys the step sequencer workflow that I've found for drums and harmonies. I'll also be sharing shortcuts as part of this workflow tip, a series of tips. So first things first, I'm going to get a preset, a drum machine designer preset. And we want to get the step sequencer up and running. So I'm going to right click and create a pattern region. And this is what it looks like. I'm going to press E to toggle it back on. In the bottom left of the screen, you'll see what key commands I'm using. So this is what you're looking at. We have 16 steps, and that equals one whole row. And we know it's 16 steps because at the top right, it says 16 steps. So let's draw in a pattern. I'm going to lower the volume and figure out how this works and what to do about it to improve the workflow. So it's pretty nice, right? But something threw me off. I don't want to hear what I'm clicking right when I click it because I'm focused on the rhythm. I don't want to be thrown off, right? It's hard to concentrate. So this green guy, that's your MIDI out. Just click it and it'll turn off. So when you click, you won't hear anything until the playhead passes through it. The key command for that is also option O. If I press it again, it's turned off, right? So let's make some hi-hats. Oh, I made a mistake. The mistake I made was my mouse moved up. Pretty stupid mistake. To make sure when you're dragging and not mistakenly going to another row, you just hold shift while you left click and drag. Okay, I don't I don't really like this because it's too fast. So I want to make just the hi-hats. I want to make the hi-hat patterns just roll on eighth notes. Right now, you can see here it's on 16th, 16th notes. You can click eight. And you have eighth notes. Now the shortcut for that is to hold control plus or minus. So control plus makes the division a smaller number and control minus makes the division a larger number, a faster number. And it goes in between. So for example, triplets. Okay, great, great. Now we want to make hi-hat rolls. I'm sure you've seen other videos. They click this guy and click these arrows. And then they say, note repeat. And you probably know that when you drag from the bottom up, that increases how many times the hi-hat repeats on its eighth division that we've selected. So let's do a crazy roll here, right? So this workflow is fine. We can toggle it back. But you can also, let's bring this back to the original. You can also press Control Option and uh, R. So Control Option R will toggle on note repeat, and you can see it over here. And Control Option S will bring you back into step on and off mode. So let's go to Control Option R. Let's roll it up. Go back to the step mode. And let's say I want to change the velocity. I'm going to press Control Option V, and that will bring the velocity, right? And just play around. Great. So now I want this. This pattern is too short, so we want to increase it. So we're going to go to the top right and click 16 steps and click 32 steps. And what you'll find is that it basically doubles it. So we can change the pattern. Whoops, let's go back. Something like that. Now, for those of you who like the screen real estate of the 16 steps, you can get that by clicking at the top right, this iPad and iPhone looking screen. It's basically your step width screen. So if I click this, we're back in the 16 step mode, but we have 32 steps total. And you know that because you see these two guys over here. 
and they represent 16 steps each. So we can draw patterns this way. <clears throat> But now we have another problem. When you're drawing in the patterns, you don't want to click your mouse and then click the next step because you might miss the timing. So the next key command is option and this squiggly line right beside the number one on your keyboard. I think it's showing a different command. OK, so that's how you toggle it. So let's see how that works. Toggling it now, we're in the second one, back to the first, back to the second ahead of time, back to the first, second one. Right, that's great. Okay, so that's the drum workflow, but I'm sure people who know FL Studio are wondering, how do I make hi-hat rolls? All right. If you want to make hi-hat rolls, but you don't want to give up the step, the step sequencer because you really like the way this is laid out, you just want to change the hi-hats, there's a way to do that. So first things first, you want to open up this guy and make sure you open up the arrow in this track view, the drum machine designer, because it's a multi-output instrument. All right, so let's go back here and click the hi-hat closed row and click Control C. That will copy the role. And we're going to paste it accordingly here into the arrangement view of where the hi-hat is playing. So I'm going to, I'm going to press the space bar. And you see the green over here? I know that's the hi-hat. So I'm going to create a new pattern region. And I'm going to make sure that I'm the same. I have the same amount of steps as the top, the first one that we made. So let's open it up. Click this and click Control V. So now we have it. Just make sure that you mute this guy. So I'm going to mute it. OK, so <clears throat> we've pasted it, but where do we pitch it? Where do we change the pitch? We have to convert it into a MIDI region. So left click the region and press Control Option Command M. And that should give you the MIDI region that you want. So now you can start pitching things accordingly. That was terrible, but you get the point. So I'm going to press undo. And if you don't want to use the key command, you can just left click the region, right click, and then go to convert, convert to MIDI region. And it's the same thing. The benefit of this is that you have the hi-hat pitched, but you keep the step sequencer that you want for your other drum sounds. Now, I wanted to add that most of you will be using your own drum samples. So I'm opening up my file browser, and I'm going to press, I'm going to type in, I'm going to find a kick or a snare. So here's a snare. So I want this snare, and I want it to be playing based on the beat that we just made, the beat pattern. You can actually just drag it directly into the instrument that you want it to replace, and there's an option that will say Replace Sample when you drag it all the way. So there you go. There it is. And I'm going to right click and say Retune. That's just to find a pitch in case there is one. There you go. Now you have your own, you can bring in your own samples. So that's just a good thing to know. So I'm going to create a new instrument. <clears throat> and I'm going to bring in some mallets. And I want to talk about the step sequencer and how it applies to your harmonies. So here's a marimba. And we need some inspiration with this drum loop that we've just made. So I'm going to right click and create a pattern region. And right now, it looks a bit messy. Click this guy over here. That's basically your pattern browser. And the key command for that is Shift Option B. Click Patterns, I mean Templates. And you can choose a different, uh, many, many, many scales. 
Now we want to audition it. So we want to turn back the MIDI out mode, which is over here. Click this guy or press option O. So now when we press up and down, we can audition this. Now you'll see in the template, it just says Iwato. It doesn't give you a pitch. And that's because we can change it over here. So let me just bring this back to the default. This is probably what you have. Just change this guy to another scale. And you'll notice that when you toggle this back on and off, you'll see C4, it will change. It didn't change. One second. Okay, there you go, E4. So that's just, you know, you can choose a scale, but maybe you want a different mode. So let's come up with something. All right, this is in 16th notes. We already learned how to change each row by division. If you want to change all of it, you just click this guy up here, click eight. And the key command for that is shift control plus or minus, and that will change the grid division of everything. And this might be useful for harmonies because if you want to write chords, you might want to write in eighth notes or in quarter notes. So let's come up with something. have something going and it's pretty easy. What if we want to see what it would sound like reversed or just playing in a different way? Well, you see this guy over here? This basically says play from left to right. And this guy says play from right to left. And this guy says ping pong. And this guy says shuffle. I don't like that. So I'm not going to show it. So the key command, control option left or right bracket, right? So I'm going to go from right to left. Back to the original, control option, right bracket. Or you can just click it here. And we can also do ping pong. So let's go back here. The ping pong key command is control option P. All right, what if we were doing reverse? We were playing it back reversed. But we wanted this to start here. Well, you see these guys over here beside what we just showcased? You can just nudge it. So now it'll play from that beginning point. Let's go back, nudge this back. All right, well, what if we want to turn this into MIDI and tweak it a little bit more? Well, we already learned the key command for that. It's Control, Option, Command, M. Or you can right-click, convert into a MIDI region. So I hope this video helped, and we're all learning this together. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll try to figure it out for you. Enjoy this update and take care.